I'm going to start us off by see if this works. Show the video. No, it's not a tab. So I'm going to do it. Screen share in the. You guys see that? Yeah. Well, yeah. Sure. yeah. All right. So this is, um, I'll walk us through. So you guys have most of you, I think you've all been in this room, but I thought we'd get a visual. So we have two boilers. Mm -hmm. Boiler two went down. Um, and Bill will give the details of the specifics of like what's broken on it and that kind of stuff. You can see it's sitting in a pile of water and we have a constant fan on it to evaporate the constant leak. Um, I'm just kind of showing the size of the room. There's the water. Yep. Um, this is boiler one, both are the same age. And Bill will give me the details of the those age of those in a minute. But I wanted to kind of show one of the issues we're going to talk about is that's how they got to get in if we end up replacing boilers, which we're going to talk about. Um, and just looking at the kind of space issue we have there. So just kind of reminding you the size of these units the massively complex amount of piping that's coming out of them and that kind of stuff, because Shelly's going to talk a little bit about um, the engineering side of replacing these and that kind of stuff. But I want to start with a visual, but basically the problem is boiler number two, this makes somebody dizzy and throw up, boiler number two is down. And Bill, you want to jump on at any time here and just kind of feed up what, what happened there? Yeah, so the boiler two has got a hole in the top of it. And basically, um, I've had two HVAC companies look at it, and it's kind of looking at it like a like a car engine. You don't really know until you get into it. And so they were looking at twenty five hundred to five thousand dollars to to get inside this thing and, and try to repair this hole. Um, so then the conversations turned to maybe now is a good time um, at at close to twenty seven years old to replace these things with, with more efficient units. These are um, 6 million BTUs a piece, each boiler, providing 12 million BTUs. Back when, back when these schools were built, there was um, some redundancy built in and things were built bigger than needed. Um, both, both contractors felt 9 million BTUs with new efficient boilers would be more than enough to heat heat the building. So we started talking about, boy, do we want to put money into these old units or do we want to take the time now and try to grab some incentives and, and get some high efficiency units in there? These units are, like I said, 6 million a piece and they have a, uh, they only have a two stage turndown on them. We're a new boiler. We would, we would, we would want to go with removing both of these and replacing them with three much smaller high efficiency units at three million a piece. The new units would be uh, 97, 97, 98 efficiency. These are below 80. Mm -hmm. These have a one to uh, a two stage turndown. The new boilers would have a 10 step turndown. Um, they'd be much more efficient. Um, obviously, there's a there's a good size price tag that goes with this. The original conversation was, let's start in, in stages. Let's do boiler number two and get two high efficiencies in there. And then maybe stage two would be get rid of boiler one and add that third high efficiency. The problem is getting boiler two dismantled and around boiler number one, Darius, you're doing a great job. It's like get out those double doors. It's like Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel, right? They oh, built this, the building around is, it. Yeah, this is great. Right there, those those two double doors. If you walked out those double doors, immediately on your left would be the gymnasium doors that people exit the gymnasium at. Um, and um, at about two o'clock would be the the garage where we store the mower and the truck and all that. If you were outside those double doors. So there's also some some pipe and plumbing retrofitting that would make much more sense. It would be um, much more um, 
financially conducive to do all at once instead of doing this in stages. So if we did this in two stages, it would cost more money than just to do the whole job at once and be done with it. So do we have any engineering done yet on it or is that still going to first happen? So there's still some question with that, Trevor. That's a very good question. Thanks for answering that. Um, both contractors that looked at it engin engineered a plan, but I should let Shelly speak to this. I, I think if we talk to FERCOG, because of the price tag, we'd have to get an actual engineer involved. Right. It would have to go out to bid. They're, 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 they're talking uh, $450,000. Each? That, that's No. Complete project. That's not engineering. It's, right. If they came in and they just did it right now, that's the electrician. That's uh, there's roof work that has to be done. This stuff vents out through the roof. Right. Jeez. Jeez. All right. So this project doesn't fall under the regular um, Chapter 30B procurement. It falls under Chapter 7C, which has to do with building construction, public works, building construction. And because of the cost of the replacement of, even if it's one boiler, we are still going to be required to get a mechanical engineer to come in and do design work. It's similar to like we did with the track where we got a landscape engineer. So yep. we're going to have to go through that process, whether it's one boiler or two boilers. Um, depending on who that company is, they may be able to help us with bidding, but if not, then mm -hmm. we can definitely seek support from FERCOG because this will have to go out to bid. Yeah. So there is some legwork that needs to be done, you know, regardless of if it's one boiler replacement or, or two boilers. It seems like that would be safer anyways, right? You'd really want somebody to look at this and go, are we doing the right thing? It does make sense. Like, <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> that's probably my office background noise. So sorry about that. <laughs> you tell them it's not Friday? Yeah, I know, right? Um, if you're done, Trevor, I got a question. Are yeah, you looking ahead, at sure. new ones? I assume these are oil fired, right? No, or they're they, gas. They're yeah. gas. So I assume, okay, so good. So we're looking at gas ones for new ones? Yeah, th these are gas, and we would look, we would continue with gas. And I believe, I, I don't know the answer yet what the incentives are, but there certainly would be some incentives. Hey, Bill, I thought they were dual fired. I thought you could switch, you can switch between gas and oil on them. These are dual fired, but we abandoned that oil tank back before I worked here. So, okay. yes, the burners are dual fired, but, but you couldn't dual fire them right now. Okay, because I was wondering, because it kind of looked like an oil fire. That's why I was looking at it. Um, if, you know, just just trying to think of all the options, like I'm guessing that there's uh, there's the hole in one section. Correct. Okay. Um, and from a redundancy standpoint, like how long could you go with just one? We were on pins and needles trying to get through the end of the winter on just one. Okay. Just because uh, I know people are going to ask questions about that. Sure. The, yeah, the, so, um, parts oh. are getting harder, very hard to find for these for the for the burner units. Yep. So can, can I ask Bill? Bill um, mm -hmm. So the, you know, we, you you sketched out for us the worst case scenario with the current boiler. What's the best case scenario the, with, with the current boiler? That we, that, that we basically get it repaired for twenty five hundred, three thousand dollars, and then we're, you know, we're still running on twenty seven year old boilers. <laughs> yeah, you just you change out the one section, I would guess, right? Yeah, like I said, he could get into it, and that one section could need a section on each side of it. You know, it's is that a realistic number though? Twenty five hundred to three thousand. I thought Jamrod was estimating it could be higher than that. Well, he Phil asked the best case scenario, so that was the low end. It's only in the yeah, I imagine it would cost a little more than that to fix the section. But, 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 but considering the alternatives, the alternative, you know, the 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 best and worst case scenario is twenty five hundred dollars versus four hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and aren't we kind of obligated to spend? The amount of money it takes to look under the hood and see what what we what we're looking at when when we're taught. I mean, how do you stand up in town meeting and say four hundred and fifty thousand dollars 
but it could be twenty five hundred dollars if we would have went that route. Um, I, I think the way you stand up at town meeting and say that is, if we don't spend four fifty now, we may have to spend five hundred in three or five years. Yep. And I get the logic behind that. I guess my question is, is if we're going to look for a new system, is just replacing that with a new gas boiler the way to go? Or do we need, because we want to start talking about AC and stuff. Do we think maybe about another route? Is it, in other words, when you step back and look at the really big picture, does it make more sense to be even more efficient with it, with the replacement and take a little bit more time to, to get something that's even better? You know, they cover that. I think that. that would be part of the process with the mechanical engineer. You know, yes. they yep. would help us make those decisions. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I think if we're going to have to replace everything, then maybe we ought to really, really think about what's best for, you know, our longer term things. Because then if we replace it with just new gas boilers, then we start looking at putting in AC and everything. I mean, it may make sense to look at it a little more holistically than just that geothermal, something like that. Yeah. yeah, there could be a number of options and maybe, you know, maybe it makes a little more sense to, to, you know, to go with a lower cost repair now, but then prepare ourselves for like, okay, you know, this will get us through, but let's really look at the bigger picture and what we can save in the long run. So I hear that's definitely one of the options we were putting on the table was just repair it where it's at. You know, maybe that could be, I thought the number was around closer to 15,000 bill originally to, to do that section, but um, and knowing that sections are going to start to bust out moving forward and that, you know, you know 15,000 is something that we can find right now in our budget or, you know, find emergency money for that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, I'm not thinking, I'm thinking about more in terms of just to hold this over, maybe get a better option if we're going to have to spend out, you know, that much money. You know, and I, and I get the oversizing thing because, I mean, we struggle with that at our safety complex. They oversized everything dramatically. Yeah. Bob, you got a question? Yeah. Uh, um, it, is it possible to replace those two boilers to get them around boiler number one? I mean, boiler number two, you said, was two units. And they're... No. So there's right now, there's only, there's only two boilers, and you would have to cut them up to bring them around. It'd be a very difficult task. It would add to cost to the labor and you'd have to engineer in a way to remove all the pipes the way it is. Um, I'll, I'll bring it back. Um, yep, getting right. boiler two around boiler one looked <laughs> impossible. Really, well, that, really that's difficult. Yeah. And that's one reason why I think like a quick, like a section repair would be certainly a little easier to get a section out of there than I don't know what happened to it. Than a whole unit. That's okay. That's it. But but if we spoiler number two for four thousand dollars, and then replace boiler number one with with a new really efficient one, it would be a lot smaller. It feels more doable. Right. So let me just talk about the funding direction we were thinking on this because that's where the opportunity about talking about doing it now was. So. Shelly, I'll attempt to say it and you can jump in or you're fine with that. All right. So right now, the the loan that we have out for um, the big six, you know, outside of the track, the other ones can be, monies can be moved from one line to the other um, without having to go back to the town. It's according to legal counsel. So right now we have um, $400,000 set for the roof. And as we've learned and we talked about, the roof is nowhere near $400,000 based on what we think it's going to be. It's going to be a much bigger project. Mm -hmm. We can take that $400,000, shift it over to the AC line, and basically pay for the lion's share of this through the AC line. And maybe and then if we go over four hundred, dollars look at using school choice or find some other you know, things you know, based within that. So that was the opportunity that we could using those funds now. We could also, based on the timeline with the roof right now, we still have time. We're not doing that this summer or anything of that sort. So we could go the repair route, but that was the idea that Shelly came up with. Um, I, I'll blame you, Shelly, because in case it's not a good idea. Um, but that was one of the ideas we are talking about, like, what do we do here if, if, you know, this, we open this thing. They could also open it up and say, you know, you got, you got, the other, the other sections are going to go. And just in our, 
experience with boilers when sections start to go good. you start working right there one you know at the built-in sections like little thermal units you pull one out it causes the other ones to have problems so it is it's, it's one of those things like we will be back talking about this shortly. trevor so I, I I would recommend we move forward with like an RFP for for engineering to kind of get get a plan together um, and then um, to get get a design together on re, you know replacing that in the meantime I guess we could look at you know a short term you know can is it a an expensive short term but if they're at eighty percent efficiency I do think we should move forward um, with changing them to like we did at the elementary school we we changed it to like one big and two small or something. So we had ability to scale up and scale down. And I like that idea. And I do think it's important to kind of, while we're looking at that using gas to look at, um, you know, while they're doing this engineer study, is it a whole lot more, a couple couple grand to say, hey, is it is it worth doing a geothermal to start mixing in air conditioning with this too, if we're gonna redo a whole heating system for the building? Is it, you know, is it um, something that they could look at? Or they would say, look, that's another whole, 50,000 bucks to engineer that thing. I mean, just we need like back of the envelope. Here's an option for, you know, replacing the, bo the boilers with three smaller ones. And then uh, here's an option if you want to do something like geothermal or some other technology. Uh, so you mean ground source heat pump? No. Yes. Hey, David, could you mute just? Yeah, thank you. Perfect. You just couldn't hear. It. What was that, Bob? You mean ground source heat pumps? Yeah, you say geothermal. Yeah, well, that well, yeah, because that was at the you know we had the climate forum this weekend. There was a real talk. I know that was more residential, but I think they do it on a large scale as well. And I don't know if the building is set up for it. If it's just hot, hot water, maybe not. Or I mean, because usually you need some air duct for that stuff too. But the Senate today announced a whole new climate bill with a lot of new incentives. Yeah, yeah, yeah and I I know we have that at our library. We've got uh, ground source heat pumps. Our whole library is done that way. Yeah, I don't know. Just if we're going to do it, it made sense to kind of look at that. But if it's ridiculous money to just even look at it, then maybe not. But I think it makes sense to move forward with engineering on replacing them. So, the G the geo oh. who is it? Oh, Phil, I'm sorry. Oh, yep, yeah. sorry. Go ahead, Phil. All right. So, um, you know, I, I I get the desire to have something new and and that it's an improvement in it in efficiency. But at the dollar amounts that we're talking about, um, I, I, I think that it's really best to, to get in there first and spend the amount of money to know that this is really what we need to do. Like I, I don't, I, I'm not a mechanical guy. I'm not mechanically inclined. I do know that boilers can last a long time and that they can fail suddenly. Um, and that, you know, that yes, Fred is correct. It, that one of the things you could say at town meeting is that if you don't spend this money now, you might not, have, you know, maybe Darius right, you don't get to do it at town meeting, but but you can tell people, yeah, if you don't do it now in five to seven years, you might have to spend fifty thousand more. Another thing that might be true though is that they this might that you might be able to repair it for twenty five hundred, three thousand, fifteen thousand, whatever, and that it could last another twenty five years. Like you, that's the thing with boilers. I, and that so, so that to me, the solution and this is something that I've been pushing for years um, is this is the perfect opportunity to start or to beef up. If there is, in fact, one, the cap frontier capital stabilization fund at all four towns and that that which which is the best practices to run a school and which we are one of the only school districts in the state that does not have one. Um, or utilize one and the reason that this is an opportunity for that is that this is something that is really everybody that listens to this understands what a boiler is and why you need to have one and how they can just go suddenly and how you need to have the money for it and this is the perfect time just to, to right now all of our warrants are open let, let everybody do a state a, put, put it in put it in just get it started shit Trevor shaking his head. I don't, but, have, you, room. I don't have any money <laughs> for it. Uh, but. No, even if it's just ten grand for each town or whatever, just um, you know, just just to, to get that concept started again and to get it funded again, um, and and that that is best practices, and we should it be is. doing that. Yep. And um, you know, the, the the other thing is that um, if 
it, it's, you know, 80% efficient is not as good as 99% efficient, but how many years would it take, would, would it take in that, within that efficiency spread to, um, to, to make up for the purchase price and the, 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 the installation and the, the metal cutting and the room taking a parting and all that other stuff. And my guess is probably those boilers would have to last a hundred years. Um, so I, I don't know. It's, it's a big stretch and I, I don't really get how all of us are just at this point where like, yeah, we need this new. I, I, so, oh, I would, Bob, I think it's first. Bob's next. I, I, you know, I was in the room with Darius the other day and I did see a lot of water on the floor. My question is, has the water been, been shut off going to the boiler? So it doesn't leak anymore or, or is it been shut off and it's still leaking out of it for how many weeks? So maybe that gives you an idea how big this hole is. If you got the water shut off and it's still leaking out of it at a, a good rate or a slow rate, do we know that bill? It's, it's not a huge rate that it's leaking out, but that's also has to do with the, the shutoff valve, which the water department, I'm waiting for the water department to come in and replace. They're putting in a new meter and a new shutoff valve. We tried to do it over February vacation and the shutoff valves didn't work. So we pushed it off to April vacation. So they, water, had to, they had to order the valve. So water's still going to that unit and it's still going to leak for whatever. Yep. Do, do we know what side? Do we know what side it's leaking from? Yes. By looking at it? Okay. Yep. You just saw, I just saw water around the whole thing when I was in there with Darius the other day. Right. Okay. Thanks. Shelly. Well, it was Trevor. Sorry. Well, Shelly was first. I was really just going to say that um, I think, you know, uh, Phil is right. I think I'm partially right, too. I think we both agree, like, <clears throat> if we can get away with it for 15000 and just kind of temporarily, like, or at least fix it, and who knows, maybe it would last longer. But I do think it's important to start the engineering process to get a plan going for the future because, you know, if one leak now, you may get another leak pretty quick. And, you know, we'd hate to do this in the winter. So I think it's important to get rolling on at least knowing what our options are, what those – what those three or four things are. One of them might be just to fix it and leave it, but I, I think it's important to get moving. Go ahead, Shelly, go ahead. No one comment on that. I was just going to summarize to sort of bring us together that it seems like there's an idea to try to have it at least opened up and looked at and see what it would take to fix it. And then another idea of starting the engineering process and it, do we need to decide if we want to do those pieces together? So, Mike, and I was looking at a comment. I think you're exactly right, Shelley, but uh, the comment about the engineering, if we fix this section and we're blessed for five more years, does the engineering change over five years? You know what I mean? And it's so, in what and this is where I get out of my league, I don't know the scope of what the engineering project is. I do know the full scope for the replacement. You're talking $20,000 worth of engineering or more, $30,000. You know, Shelly and I are just kind of throwing around numbers today about it. So we don't want to spend thirty thousand dollars to a plan that we're not sure we're going to use until five, seven years, and then all of a sudden, you know, some other Tesla invention comes right. out. We want to use instead? <laughs> it's true. I mean, I, so I I agree with that. I I wouldn't want to waste that money either. But I, I do feel like um, this is this is a canary in the coal mine. Like we, we should these have been in for. I don't know how old that, that they are. They've got to be 30 years old. Um, close. So I think, you know, how much, you know, if you're going to get 10, 15, 20 more years out of them, that, yes, that'll make a difference. But I do think we should, I mean, it, it, the signs are there. We should get planning to what we are going to do. And I don't know if there's a quick, you know, don't even think about geothermal or heat pumps because it's ridiculous. You don't have the building set up for it or, it, you know, just get it. Maybe we can do a basic exploratory instead of yes. a full. I was just saying, like, what are we asking for? I guess we can find yeah. out what they, what the different products they can provide, so to speak, services they can provide. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I would agree because I think we're obligated to, to look on to do that initial look to see what, you know, what what can be fixed, and then, I, you're right, Trevor. We got to think about the future because 
you know, it, it'd stink to be stuck in this position where we have to replace it. And it kind of prevents us from not only replacing it with new equipment, but very good, efficient stuff. Because this is kind of a golden opportunity to look at something to, that not only replaces it, but gets us away from like having to rely on fossil fuels. And, and the time is tough right now, too. Right. So. And you can also look at electric boilers because Tom and I were having those discussions. And, you know, I mean, you know, he, he does all that stuff at UMass. And I you know uh, certainly an electric boiler is certainly an option, too. I think that's why we're kind of obligated to do that, because then if it's electric, we can offset it with solar and actually maybe, maybe cover all the costs for operation. I'm sure we can contact several mechanical engineers and do a consultation. They might yeah. charge us a small fee, but that yeah. would be the first step. So I'm hearing in summary, open up the hood to repair it. And, and hopefully we're repaired. If we're not, obviously we'll meet again. Um, if you open up the hood and there's other problems, then we will have more, well, the more detailed report from you for opens it up. Um, and at the same time, look into mechanical engineers about do they do, can they give us a consult on the basic first steps approach so that we can plan for the future, the eventual replacement of the boiler. Is that what I'm hearing? Yep, I would agree with that. Yeah. And I would put in a plug for Phil's comment about the capital op budget too, because we, we did that in, in our town and we actually put in an override just to fund the capital. It wasn't what we would have ideally liked, but... And that type of override is much easier to get past because it's a specific targeted one that only goes to that. So it's definitely something to think about for the future. And, and it'll help us, you know, get in a better position for capital spending. I think and it, just, just to piggyback on, on David's comment, you know, what, what we did in Conway, I think it was 10 years ago. Now we set up for the, for the elementary school, for the grammar school, the gra we're the only one of the four towns that the grammar school has its own capital stabilization fund. And we did that because at that time, our two boilers in that building were 25 years old. And, it, and it, you know, even though none of them needed repairs, it's just what they could go at any moment. And, you know, it is now, we've been funding that every year. There is now enough money and there's $260,000 in there now. And um, it can be, you know, we're, we're ready to go. When one of those fails, we're ready to go. The money's in the bank and it's going to get taken care of. And that's how you do it. And I, I'm sorry to be more annoying than I even normally am. But just to remind you that Conway is the gold standard and you should aspire to be like that. <laughs> Well, yeah, I'll mute him. I'll yeah, mute him. I was going to say. You. <laughs> I think we're getting some strange feedback there. I, I think we all agree with that at this board, and we tried that, and we couldn't get it by the towns, right? And that's why we're kind of stuck with this this plan that we have, where we have this group, and we we asked for this funding to do these capital projects, and we couldn't get the towns to go. Okay, we trust the schools enough. And this committee enough to and, and i think the idea was that we were going to ask for money do these projects build that trust so that we could go back to the town in a couple of years and say see we did what we told you we would do we were good stewards of the money we would like to develop this capital plan and start funding it by all the towns and i think that was i think if correct me if i'm wrong Gary's, but that's kind of where we're at right now yeah, I don't know if we were holding back on the capital, creating a capital account. And quite frankly, Phil, you're on the school committee, so, you know, make it a push for it. You know, bring it up. <laughs> we're going to meet on, two, we, I want, one of the reasons we met quickly today, because Frontier is a school committee on Tuesday. And so we'll be reporting to Frontier about what we're doing regarding the boiler, because I let them know via email a month ago when the things started going down. I was like, wait and see, but you've got problems on the way here. So we can talk about that, and Phil, we can make that part of our, um, strategic plan for next year to put that through to bring that to the town. I don't, you can't squeeze it in there now. Um, yeah, you can. You could. The, the warrants are open in all four towns. I know, but um, I don't know, to me, it feels like you're going to rush that through. So, I'd rather, yeah, I'd it would be rough. You're right. But we we, we right. have a plan. It's better better to have it planned out. I mean, we don't need money to put into it. You know, the towns are planning to money to put into it. So, you know, create it and then ask you to put in ten thousand next year or something like that might be a more realistic start right you can fund it with a dollar just to get just to get it out there and then and then start with it and you can set up a separate capital committee just for that 
like a, essentially like a permanent one, you know, be at this committee or whatever to, to fund it mechanically. And maybe it's time to resell the idea because it's really sound fiscal management and it's it's really just conservative fiscal management of the process. And we do have the fund established. It just doesn't have any money in it. So the process has already been done to create the fund. It's been established? Yes. I looked into this. Uh, last year, I think, Phil, you brought this up, or maybe even in the fall, I, I verified with Scanlon's office, we already have the fund set up. There's just nothing ever been put into it. Well, it sounds like Conway needs to start a bake sale to start funding it then, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's good then. That means we don't need to go to towns to do that. We can just go to the towns and ask to put money in. It's tough to ask to put money in where at the same time every year we're asking them to give us money for something else. That's no, actually, actually, this is actually easier, and it's an easier ask to take care of the buildings that you have than it is to take to, to like spend money to pay teachers. I swear, Pe people like they really get they really get that like the whole concept of taking care of what you have because it resonates with them. In, everybody's a homeowner or rents, and um, it's it's tangible. And um, uh, it's a sad but true comment. Yep. yep. Okay, folks. Thank you. We got the information we need. I'll share that with school committee on Tuesday at the same Darius. time. Darius? Yes. We're going to vote on the two sub to two subcommittee minutes too for Donna because she asked me to make sure that, that was done and it's on the agenda. So I'm going to call. Well, yes. Good job. Good job. Good job. I've gone real aggressive in my last few weeks here. Okay. So we're going to vote. January 6th and January 27th meeting minutes. And I already have somebody who's here. So, I'll make a motion. Bob? Hi. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, Trevor. Yeah. Motion yeah, to approve. Yeah, made a motion to approve. We Second. That. Thank you. Okay, Bob? Hi. Uh, second, Bob? Yeah. As you're officially known. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, Judy, yes. Fred? Yes. Trevor? Yes. Phil? Yes. Dave? Oh, Dave? Aye. Thanks, son. Okay, yes, now you can adjourn at 5 Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Second. Aye. 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 Thank you all very much. Aye. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks.